In today's video, I want to speak about the thin line between love and trust. The truth is that you can love unconditionally, but you cannot give unconditional trust. Love and trust are two concepts that are intricately intertwined in any relationship, whether in a romantic relationship, a friendship, a professional partnership, love and trust plays a major and crucial role. Number one, you can love someone without trusting them. I know that can sound like a conflicting idea because somehow what we have grown to know and believe is that when you love someone, you have to trust them. It feels like there's a pressure on the line that if I love you, I have to trust you, which then gives this underlying thought that if I do not trust you, it means I do not love you. No, that's a lie. As Christians, we were not called to trust people, but we are obligated to love only. We are not obligated to trust. So when it comes to trusting people, it is solely a thing of cognitive decision. It is not a thing that you have to be pressured to do or a thing that you must do. And the certainty of this is that everyone is love worthy. Every human being is love worthy. But when it comes to trust, not everyone is trustworthy. So you have to search and do your investigation to know who is trustworthy before you give your trust. But when it comes to love, everyone deserves your love. That is why you were called to love. Scripture says in the book of Proverbs, Trusting an unreliable person in a difficult time is like a rotten tooth or a faltering foot. So when you put your trust in someone whom you have not investigated and done your due diligence to know if they are trustworthy, you are only putting yourself at risk of being hurt or harmed. Because just like a rotten tooth, which when you are hungry and you want to eat, you can't chew on your food. Instead, you get hot. It's the same thing with trusting an unreliable person. Just like a faltering foot, a wounded foot, you can't run with it. So the truth is, when you put your trust on people because you love them, you might end up hurting yourself. Before you come to say that people are wicked, who did you trust when you were not supposed to trust them? I have seen situations where people argue that you cannot say you love someone and you do not trust them. And this is because a lot of people do not know that there is a distinct nature between love and trust, which is why they get confused when they thought of, I can love you and not trust you is presented to them. And this is the reason I'm making this video to help someone so that you can change your belief upstairs and not get hurt. And with this knowledge, you have to take off the pressure from yourself of thinking because I love this person, I need to force myself to trust them. Because I know there was always that pressure whereby we are compelled within to trust the people we love. Because I love my mom, I have to trust her. But no, I have to investigate to know is my mom trustworthy? Is my sibling trustworthy? Is my friend trustworthy? Is my partner trustworthy? Is my wife or husband trustworthy? Because I can't just give out my trust unconditionally. I love all of them unconditionally. But giving them my trust unconditionally is not an obligation. Trust has to do with reliability, honesty, and dependability. And if someone does not possess these virtues, you don't need to trust them. Love them from afar. Again, the demand for trust from someone you love can be manipulative. Because I know there is a lot of people that are in relationships, whether friendship or any form of relationship, who demand trust from their partners. They'll be like, if you love me, you are supposed to trust me. And that can be very manipulative because in a place where they should come off with clarity, they are now trying to abscond being clear and bringing honesty and openness and transparency to the picture just to make you feel guilty for not trusting them. That is an error that you need to correct for yourself and not be under that pressure to allow someone to demand trust from you. You love them, that's right. But when it comes to trust, trust is not equal love, neither is love equal trust. So if someone comes up to you and says, if you love me, you have to trust me, you can tell the person, no dear. Before you trust them, you need to have a time-proven knowledge of the credibility of their character. Number two, the greater the trust, the greater the betrayal. It will not hurt so much if someone that you do not know betrays you. If someone you do not care about, you do not love, betrays you. But the error is that once you are hurt by someone that is so close to your heart, someone you trusted, someone you loved, someone you gave your heart to, it breaks you. And that is where a lot of people find themselves because it is the people 
that they end up trusting that ends up betraying them. And does that mean that you can be so perfect that nobody will betray you? No, human beings fail. We all know that humans lie all the time. And because of the nature of the hearts of humans, which is desperately wicked, you need to be careful with who you give the gifts of your trust. Because there are so many occasions of people who have been hurt by the people that were so close to them, people they loved and trusted, out of compassion which they had for them and they come to a point of being so betrayed because the greater the trust invested the greater the betrayal experience the feeling of betrayal experience of hurt and pain becomes as great as the trust you invested in that relationship so that is why before you invest a bit of your trust on any human being you should be careful to make sure you do your due diligence you can love them but trusting them should come with a measure of discipline and carefulness. And this is what you need to know that trust should not be given based on compassion. Trust should not be given based on love. Trust is not a feeling. It is not an emotion. It is a cognitive decision. Love is an emotional response, but trust is not. So you have to make that very distinct so that you can help yourself in this wicked world. So you can tell yourself when somebody is demanding trust from you, I should not just trust you because I feel the pressure to trust you to prove that I love you. Because I do not need to prove that I love you by trusting you. But trusting you should come from a place of not the surface knowledge, but a deeper knowledge and clarity of who you are, of your character, of the credibility of your person so you should come to a place of saying i need more clarity with this person before i should trust them david after being betrayed by his closest friend his counselor his companion said even my best friend the one i trusted completely the one who shaped my foot has turned against me it wasn't an enemy who taunted me if it was my enemy filled with pride and hatred then i could have endured it I would have just run away. You know, that is the irony. If it is an enemy that wants to hurt you, you can spot it from afar. But when it comes from someone you love and trust, you may not even see it coming. That is why you can love people, but then when it comes to trusting, you should be a little bit careful. Things can really get messy when the line between trust and love gets blurry. Because sometimes your feeling of love for someone can actually blow out your need for trust. It can make you just trust them because you are so invested in this. In Samson's story, Delilah kept taunting Samson, if you love me, tell me your secret. If you love me, you're supposed to let me into this information. If you love me, you're not supposed to keep this and that from me. If it is something that I'm not supposed to give to you, please don't demand trust on that area. I need to know who you are in this area before I trust you with it. And the ladder kept taunting Samson and it's a crazy story because I see it literally as him telling him, if you love me, tell me how to kill you. If you love me, tell me the source of your power. If you love me, tell me how to tie you down. And I'm like, how does that make sense? Because when the line between love and trust is blood, you may not even see when someone you love is trying to get an information to hurt you. Which is why you need to love wholeheartedly, but trust incrementally based on the degree of how much you know them. Don't allow your feelings of love overcloud your need for trust. And had it been Samson has stood his ground to say, I love you and I can't tell you my secret because I don't trust you with it. That would just have saved his life. And sometimes you need to come to that place of saying to someone whom you do not really trust, you don't have confidence if they have your best interest at heart. I love you, but I can't trust you at this moment. I need more time to trust you. I need more evidence to be able to give you my trust. And that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So here's what I will say to you. Love everyone, but do not trust everyone. If you want to trust anyone at all, Make sure that you do your investigation to see if they are trustworthy. It is the knowledge that you gain about them over time that will determine how trustworthy they are. And you are so free to have a good opinion of everyone. You do not need to walk out and be suspicious of everyone. I'm not really sure if this one is this or that. Just have a good opinion of people, but do not give your trust. That is your gift to give. It's a decision. Scripture says, 
owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. Number three, the beauty of love and trust. In as much as we say that you can love someone without trusting them and you can trust someone without loving them because you can see that all over the place. There are people that trust others in a professional partnership but do not like them at all. They can trust them with how credible they are with their work. They can trust them with how credible they are character-wise but they can't love them. They just don't like them. But in order to have an healthy relationship with anyone, you need the codependency of both love and trust. But in order to have a beautiful relationship, an healthy and strong connection with someone, you need to have the interdependency of both love and trust. Because the beauty that exists between love and trust is that love can build trust and trust can strengthen love. When you love, it can help you to start trusting someone. And when you trust someone, it strengthens the love that began in the first place. So now you can see this relationship, how it flows. I love you, then I start knowing you better. I start investigating things about you. And then I start trusting you because of the evidence that I've known. Out of this evidence that I've known about you and trusting you, the love that I have for you at first becomes deeper and stronger and much more healthy. So what I would tell you when it comes to trusting in your relationship is that it should be in degrees. You do not just trust totally on things you do not understand. You trust in degrees. You can trust someone in one aspect of life without trusting them in another. Some people are good with money and others are not good with money. Some people are good with secrets and information and others are not good with it. Because if you give them the information, they leak it out. They can't have the ball well to keep it together. If you give other people money who are not good with money, they, their desires won't let them keep the money intact. So you would have need to know people's strengths when you get to relate with them. Because you can only trust a human being based on their strength. You love them in their weakness. That's the compliment. And you trust them in their strength. So when you come to talk about love and trust, the beauty is that it complements each other. I trust you in your strength and I love you in your weakness. Because I don't have to trust you in your weakness. If I do that, I'm only trying to hurt myself. You need to learn how to give yourself the time to learn someone so that you can get to know them better and i know most people do not have the patience to try to understudy and learn people before they get to trust them they go full out on love and then try to force themselves to trust the people and before they know things start popping off everywhere and they get hot and now the relationship gets scattered because they do not take the time to understudy someone and develop patience to allow time to review who these people are so that they can know this is this person's weakness. I should love them in their weakness if I want to continue with them. And this is their strength. I should trust them in their strength. In Proverbs 31 verse 11, it is said of the virtuous woman, her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. This means that she was trustworthy because it said he can. He didn't say he must trust her or he should trust her. He said he can because there was evidence to which he can trust her with. And I need to say this to someone because this will help your relationship. Do not demand trust from your partner when they are seeking for clarity, when there is none. If your partner is asking you for clarity and doubting some things about your life, or about what you have done because they can't trust you in that area, you don't need to start telling them, is it because you don't love me enough? Why don't you trust me? You should trust me. You should know my heart. No, don't tell them that. Instead, bring clarity through clear communication, honesty, transparency, and openness. If you wish to be vulnerable, yeah, you can bring that up too so that you can help this person see your heart and be able to trust you. You cannot demand trust because at the moment you start demanding trust, you have turned to this person that is trying to manipulate and control the other person who is your partner. And it could be looked at as a narcissistic tendency. So you need to be trustworthy 
such that your partner can trust you. Again, trust is built from a place of understanding because the more you know someone, the better you can understand them. And the better you understand them, you can trust them. And when you trust, that trust will strengthen the love you have for them in the first place. And this is the beauty of love and trust. Ultimately, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. That is the scripture in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. And all I can think about is, if you give God all your heart, there is none to give anybody else. But it means if anybody wants to get your heart, they should get to know God. Because a person who will not be able to level up to the standard of getting to know God and give their hearts to God also, they can't find your heart. Even when you tell them you love them, they'll be so insecure to think that because you don't trust them, you do not love them. So you need to be careful and give God your heart because you can trust God with your heart that when you try to trust people, God will preserve your heart from getting hurt. God will help you with discernment to know who to trust and who to not trust. And this is the ultimate, which is I'm trusting God. I'm giving God all my heart. I'm not leaning on what I know and what I get to discover about this person. But I trust God to help me with the things I cannot see beyond what I can see. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has been helpful and beneficial to you. It is a pleasure that you have stayed to watch it to the end. Do well to give this video a thumbs up if it is a blessing to you and share it to others who may like to see it or who will be blessed also. Do so well to subscribe to this channel. I am Uwe Mepan. This is my YouTube channel and I would love you to join me in building this community. If you have video ideas off of this, I would like you to drop it in the comment section. I will go through it with you and get to talk with you down there. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. See you in my next YouTube video. God bless. Bye-bye.